Right, so this is synchronicity, not synchronicity tree, but I'm about to be simmering trees probably every episode because it is synchronicity tree. You're tapping into the root of the symmetry. What would symmetry? <laughs> what would symmetry be without breathing in leaves? That being said, I am also drinking tea though. All right, so don't worry. <laughs> we have a little bit of our motif. Our motif going on here. Mo leaves with our motifs. You as a spirit are infinitely nothing. Okay, so as nothing, you are unimaginable. There's just, it's pure nothingness. Like there's nothing to imagine, like just n not imagination. Okay, that's what zero represents. Zero represents your individual space before you create an imagination. As space, you are simultaneously connected yet separate from all other spaces. And thus, the moment you express yourself, we naturally play this out. So as a space, when you are simultaneously separate yet connected to all other space, this is where, I mean, life becomes three. So, I mean, let's get in there, right? Zero. Zero represents your circumference. Everything is happening inside of you. Your spirit is the coincide hence, as we've covered in the first episode. The only coincidence is that you as a spirit are a spirit. Therefore, everything that happens after that is going to be intentional and it's going to be coincidental in that it coincides with your intentions and coincides with your spirit. So when you, as a zero, as no imagination, imagine yourself, that is literally you creating your first ego or your first eagle, your first, the highest idea of yourself. That's the ego. That's the eagle. Your imagination, your individual fire is your desire. That's your passion. And that's going to be the number one. And then this is where we have binary language, 010101. It's about spirit, ego, spirit, ego. And all of life is nothingness relating with something, a spirit relating with its ego. And then all of us as spirits are using our egos to relate with other egos that are operated by other spirits. And now all of us as spirits are able to express and connect our nothingness through these egos and then these egos our imaginations are changing now fire right fire dances so our imaginations dance but the fact is our imaginations are ever only ever going to be an expression of our individuality so you as a spirit the moment you imagine something that's literally you creating something from nothing it's just straight up and it is the perfect ultimate expression of your individuality you as an individual create your imagined nation so now all nations that you're a part of all collectives that you build are going to be informed by your imagined nation by your own god by your own fire, by your own ideas. So when you as a spirit, as a zero, are like, okay, I, I'm nothing, but I don't want to be nothing. I want to be something. This is why fire is simultaneously uh, love yet hate. So we can just think passion, like just like pure passion. Like whatever you're passionate about is something that gets you fiery. Like that's a perfect expression of your individuality. The things that you're passionate about are a perfect combination of what you love and hate. Because literally you as a spirit, the fact is, if you didn't hate being nothing, then you would not want to be something right now. The only reason that you are beating your heart, 
the only reason that you're invested in this lifetime is because you don't want to be nothing. You hate being nothing. Now, I'm not saying you hate it in a negative way, but you hate it in a great way. Great it. Right? You grate your nothingness. And so this is why great is about separating. So you as a spirit, G being the seventh letter in the alphabet, is all about separation. It is about greatness is only um, like greatness only ever exists if a spirit separates from itself. So greatness is entirely egotistic, right? Whatever your idea of greatness is, is a representation of your ego and your desires. The only reason that I would think Tiger Woods is a great athlete is because I have some form of respect and thus connection and information about the sport that he plays. Otherwise, I literally cannot consider that athlete great. The only reason I could consider Michael Jordan great, Kobe Bryant great, the only reason I could consider any athlete great, right, is because I subconsciously connected with whatever sport they played and now I'm able to project all the hardships of what it takes to perform into that sport onto that player. And then once that player excels in that sport, the only reason I even have close to an idea or feeling about how great they are is because I connected with that same structure and I was not actually nearly as great in it myself. Because if I was great in basketball in that way, right, if I was a super pro star athlete, then I would not view that, I wouldn't view like someone like Steph Curry as a great athlete because I'm above him. So this is where we are literally only learning about ourselves based on how we perceive others because how we perceive others is only ever a reflection of how we perceive our own imagination, our own ego. So whenever someone gets jealous of you, that's someone that has a relationship with their ego that is getting triggered by your ego because this person when they're inside of their own space they feel like they're the best right but then the moment they connect with you they can now see facts that they're not the a perfect example of this is like someone who is inside of their house all the time and they think that they're the strongest spirit because they can do 10 push-ups and inside of their whole house no matter where they go in their home no one can do more push-ups than them because they're the only ones there <laughs> this is what it's like being a spirit alone in your own space literally like when you're just alone in your own space you are the strongest you are the most infinite you are god you're infinitely creative no one can basically rain on your parade in that way no one can put water on top of you because no one's feelings are able to rain down on yours. You're everything. You are the feeling. The moment you connect to the universe, it starts raining. <laughs> Best believe that. The moment you connect to the universe, you start getting all these other waters from the sky, all these other waters raining down on you and it's getting dense and all these other feelings starting to pile on top of yours and drown you. Because that's what happens when you connect with spaces outside of yourself. Other spirits' feelings matter. And this is how the matter is formed, literally by rain. So, when you as an individual desire to be great, that's only ever going to be expression of your ego. So my ego can only ever be the expression of who I am as a spirit. It doesn't matter how I feel about my ego. I'm only ever connecting with the natural expression of my desires. And my desires are what separate me from all other spirits. You don't know what I want. And not only that, what I want changes every day. Yet it's all based in my space. Right? So that's what your imagination is. Your desires change every day, yet they're always going to be connected by you. No one can see your desires except you. No one knows what you want to do today or tomorrow or the day after that except you. 
And it takes you feeling like communicating that for all of us to see it. So this is why fire and water are both internal elements. They are unseen. Your thoughts and feelings, unseen. No one can see how you think and no one can see how you feel except you because you, the spirit, are the space creating these elements to express your emotions. It then takes you combining these elements of fire and water to create the first external element that is air, that is your mind. So your fire element, that's your number one, that's your God, that's your man. Your water element, that's your number two, that is your woman, that is the feminine feeling that then combines with the man to create the child, that creates the chi, that creates the air, the chi air merkaba that now your god, your thought can sit in to express its ego to all the other spirits who have done the same thing as it. So now here we are, right? We're all gods sitting inside of our minds, communicating our individuality into structures that we built by doing so in order to relate with spaces outside of ourselves. So we're constantly creating life right now based on how we're creating life internally. Again, that's what the caduceus all about. Bring your snake inside of yourself, wrap it in your own spine, create your own tree, found your own stability so that you can generate a garden that produces fruits for you to eat instead of constantly needing to eat fruits from other people's gardens because you didn't grow your own. So this is what I'm all about as Hermes. This is what Hermeticism is all about, teaching you how to grow your own garden <laughs> on an esoteric level, right? Teaching you how to be your own symmetry, be your own natural simulation so you're only eating from yourself this then is where we get into fasting hop into the ultimate functional fast get into our online courses if you are not fasting with us because this is essential in all realms and realities but it is clearly super necessary in the world that we're in right now <laughs> with the industrial revolution having been pumping all these toxins and heavy metals and garbage into the environment uh, for us to be poisoned by. Fasting is the way <clears throat> that you make sure that you're still connected with your spirit. Because the more you're eating from the world, the more you are now just forced to be connected to the body and the simulation itself and your vibration stays low and you're not able to truly ride the frequency of your spirit i'll get into that that later that's really like the science of fasting the spiritual science of fasting um but i mean of course i had to naturally bring it all together because this is who i am number wise <laughs> god one lucifer two woman so god one man fire lucifer two your woman the connection and then three is the human the child so all humans are god's answer to lucifer so god the moment a spirit is god the moment a spirit creates an idea it now has a question which powers a soul and that's what lucifer is is questions and problems and when you have problems, you ask questions. So once you have an idea and you're alone in your imagination, that's a problem for an individual. All spirits, when they're alone in their imagination, that's a problem. That is what the soul then becomes. Uh, we create a soul because it's like, okay, well, I'm alone in my imagination, but I want to be connected in my imagination. So this is where the zero goes from one into two. When you as a spirit generate this fiery imagination that you feel like is a great expression of your individuality, 
now you feel like connecting to it. And that is what polarizes you into a soul. So now you have your body of water. So this is where we create the eight. The number eight being the soul. That first circle is the expression of your one. That second circle is the expression of your two. And this comes together to create three and is then the expression of your soul. And then we have like the Ouroboros uh, and the idea of a snake eating itself forever because it's just about the soul. It's about how all of us as spirits have sex inside of ourselves and create the things that we consume. We consume what we create. So everything that we consume is something that we made. That's the esoteric meaning behind the Ouroboros and the snake being in an infinite eight and consuming itself, right? It's just more of that caduceus imagery. As far as the wisdom of knowing what snakes are, snakes are sex. So you can either have sex with someone outside of yourself and keep going outside of yourself, or you can have sex with yourself. And again, you're rolling with Hermes. I very much advocate for having sex with yourself because that is how you're gonna create stability and actually love yourself. It is 1.11 a.m. as I'm saying this. So, this is how you create a soul, by literally connecting with yourself. And you connect when you, with yourself when you want to feel connected with your imagination. So you have to connect with your imagination before anyone else can. This is why as a spirit, you are always alone inside of yourself. You have to be alone inside of yourself. And your soul is the representation of how you are alone in your feelings of being connected to an imagination. So as a spirit, the only reason that you exist right now is because you feel like being connected to ideas. And all these ideas are only possible because of the main idea that is you as an individual. And any ideas that you are using to express yourself, that you're using to communicate, are ideas that you are using to, I mean, ex yeah, express your individual. But then reflexively build up your individual if you believe in the ideas more than you believe in yourself. So that's like, that's... The definition of witchcraft if you believe in the language that you're speaking more than your ability to give that language meaning <laughs> Woo! that's rough that's really rough and that's what white supremacist trains us to do to make us believe in the language more than our ability to make the language matter because they need us to make their language matter. So they're going to work their hardest to make us believe that this language, their light, the way that they love, the way that they apply logic and law over lands that they don't own, over lands that they stole, over lands that they actively steal with lies. If they're going to be able to do that successfully, then... <sighs> yeah, they they have to... <laughs> colonize our minds with concepts like numbers and make us connect with something that looks like it's going to serve us when in reality we're actually serving it so this is the wisdom of the number two one is the master two is a servant anything that you connect to you serve so this is why women are naturally submissive because women are the two energy and this is uh again it's not about one being more positive or negative than the other. Life only exists in air, in a balance of masculine and feminine. Right? You only make a child from a man and woman coming together. So, to be in two energy is about you as a spirit. When you as nothingness create an idea, that is you generating a man. And this man is the representation of you. This man is a representation of your individuality, of your idea of yourself. And once you connect with it, that's you agreeing. So that's where you become your own woman. So you made your man first, and then we could, I mean, that's like biblical 
uh, taking the rib from the man and making a woman. It's about, at that point, the rib, you know, being about breath and everything. The woman works to breathe life into the man. And the man also works to breathe life into the woman. So the woman makes the man possible. Right? So when you have an imagination, the only reason that your imagination can possibly come to fruition is because of your woman. Is because you have feelings that make your thoughts matter. Right? You can have all these thoughts. You can have all these imaginations. You can have all these men. But if you don't have women supporting them, if you don't have feelings supporting them, then they're not going to be able to communicate or express themselves. They're not going to be able to show up and thus they're not going to build anything to support you as a spirit. So again, this is just like how it all plays out inside of us as spirits before we can get lost in all these words. Um, because it's about you knowing that once you connect with your own imagination, you are being the woman to your own man. You are being the girl that serves the boy. You're being the wife that serves the husband. So the husband can keep providing for the space, right? So ideally your imagination, your ideas are so powerful and so awesome that they provide for you. They literally imagine your nation. They build your nation. And the only reason your ideas would build your nation, the only reason your one, your individuality, would be able to be expressed in a way that allows you to be even more of an individual is because you connected with it before others did. So then this is why all these, so many spirits out here will wish and hope that they're famous and that they're well known. But if they don't know themselves first, then what are they even going to create to be known for? Right? So this, I mean, that's like just endless desire in the universe as far as spirits being out here wishing that they were known for something, wishing that they could have other spirits paying attention to them because then they would be happy because they feel like they'll only be happy when they're connecting with others. Yet, if they were actually paying attention to themselves, they wouldn't want that. I've been through all that. <laughs> Again, that's why it's so important. Be hermetic. Have sex with yourself create art from the inside out so you actually build something that you love and support you have a garden you have a simulation that you enjoy being in so that when people come and connect with it it's a proper healthy expression of you and you're able to give your value to the universe while also protecting yourself Because the moment someone connects to you, they're consuming you. So this is like the whole balance of water. When you as a spirit create a fire, when you create a passionate imagination that's just dancing in your space and your fire being too hot to touch is separating you from all other spirits. Your imagination separates you from all other spirits. When you have this fiery imagination that's constantly dancing and expressing your desires and it's super beautiful, it gets you wet, right? So now you're turned on by your fire. You're turned on by your Leo, so to speak, because Leo being fixed fire is our imagination. Leo is a representation of all of our imaginations as far as just the element of Leo. Your imagination, if it's any element, is fix fire because you as a space as a spirit space are you can again never get outside of yourself a space can never touch another space all we can do is create things that let us feel like we're touching other spaces that let us simulate vibrations and then we actually create vibrations and we're actually vibing and then the moment we feel like oh life isn't real that's us starting to detach from the things that we made real. <laughs> like anything that's real is something that shows up every day, right? So like, I mean, life is real. 
right? Literally, the fact that we have the word real to describe a movie real shows that nothing is a coincidence. So when spirits say movie reels, right, they're talking about reels just repeating. And in general, life is one movie where it, everything that's repeating is real to you because it's something that matters to you or else it would not be repeating in your world. If you weren't repeating these certain things in your mind, then they wouldn't actually matter to you. This language, for example, right? How long does it take you to repeat these words in your mind, in your subconscious, to actually be able to make them matter to you so that you can express them in a confident way that then allows all of us to build? See, this is like why language is it and why I'm the god of language, Hermes. It's not about me literally creating language, it's just about me having this awareness and thus no matter what language, no matter what light I'm using to communicate, I'm destined to quote unquote dissect the dialect and make sure that we're using it in the most hyper intelligent spiritual way possible. Because it's always about the spirit. It's always about us knowing that we're creating light so that we can limit our unlimited nature. So this is why nature looks limited, but the way that nature plays out is unlimited. It just always has to look limited or else you couldn't look at it. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like you can't look at something that's unlimited. That's not how limits work. That's not <laughs> like, you feel me, right? So the limit is the light. So you can think of numbers as light and your feelings as darkness and your feelings as darkness are not visible until you bring them to light. So your feelings, your fire and water are not visible until you use air and earth to bring them to light, to expose them, to express yourself, to exit out of your space and show all of us who you truly are. So that's what the number three is. The moment that you as a zero have a one, have an individual idea that you feel like you would like to connect to and you bring your two into one, you've now added one plus two. You now created three. This three is your chi. So now you as a spirit, your mind. This is why life is based in three, six, nine. It's all about three. It's about the chi, it's about the sea. It's about knowing that everything you can see is only possible because a spirit is communicating. A spirit is combining fire and water. So your imagination can only vibe. Your imagination can only move and communicate and actually build structures when you combine your soul into it when you feel like bringing your water and fire together and once you keep bringing your fire and water together in a consistent way you create the communication that builds the structures to support you so this is what our bodies are doing all the time this is what we are doing as spirits all the time we are constantly constantly every second of every day combining our thoughts and feelings so that we can communicate our nothingness into something. And the ways in which we do this are infinite. So this is why the air, the universe, uh, well, <laughs> I'm gonna, it looks like earth and is powered by water, but uh, facilitated by air. There we go, those would be the words. The universe looks like earth, let me say powered by fire. The universe looks like Earth, is powered by fire, connected by water, and facilitated by air. So everything you can see is, it looks like Earth. Like, oh, that's Earth, that's a thing. And that thing is only possible because it's connecting, right? So whatever thing you're looking at only exists because of connections and that's the water. And those connections are being facilitated by air. So this is why your body is water, it's connections, yet it needs to breathe. 
your body can only keep being animated by your mind as long as it's breathing. If you stop breathing, your mind cannot animate your body. You cannot facilitate your connections anymore. Now your body may look connected, but it's not actually uh, being facilitated into any structure that actually represents your individuality. So that's where your body, I mean being a microcosm of the universe, is clearly powered by your fire, right? Powered by your passion, your imagination. Your body only matters because of your imagined nation, your God. You're always operating from your imagination and your desire to connect your imagination to others. That's basically what would get you up out of bed every day. <laughs> you as a spirit being like, okay, I have an individual idea and I want to bring it through the universe because I feel like it matters. And this is where we use our bodies of water to create the bigger body of water that is actually the universe. So when you connect with your own imagination, that is you taking your soul, taking your Lucifer into your God to create a human. Now you're creating all the colors because the answer to God's question, how do I connect with ideas, is the human, colorful communication. So we can think of God as white in that case, and Lucifer is black. And when you combine white and black, you get infinite spectrums of colors. And this is why nothing in life is actually white or black. It is some spectrum of color. It's just then we have all these terms, and now we also like we can identify the ideas of the complete polar opposite sides of vibration. Right, so this is how then like we get lost into uh, concepts like race and stuff and have black and white use uh, against us. <laughs> so it's about knowing that you as a spirit can only make your imagination colorful because your imagination is white and your feelings are black. And it is by combining your whiteness and blackness that you create the infinite colors that actually communicate whatever you want to communicate. And then this is where colors are just infinite. <laughs> it's very awesome. Colors. <laughs> colors in like totally other dimensions. I'm just thinking about all the colors I've seen. <laughs> there, are, uh, there are not words for a lot of the colors that I've seen. So, This is then where like, right, every color, once we categorize a color, that's literally us creating earth from looking at air. So the moment we make our minds to express ourselves and we categorize our mind, that is us literally making the body. So your heart, your brain, your intestines, your kidney, your spleen, your liver, your bones, your pancreas, your kidneys, all of these are minds that are categorized, right? So all these things are earth, but they're, the separation is low key and illusion. Like the separation is there. This is why balance helps us learn because the separation is clearly there. Your heart and your liver are not doing the same thing, yet they're both part of the same system and they're both serving the same master. So this is why spirits, water is always based in the two. Two is about water, one is about fire, three is about air, four is about earth, five is about energy, bicycle reality, death. So this is why death is an illusion because you are energy. Energy is your energy right there. So. Your energy, your energy, your inner ego can never die. Your ego can never die. I'm physical proof of that. My, my imagination, my ego, my eagle, my inner G, my inner chi, my inner child, my inner child, the, the inside expression of myself 
can never die. It's impossible. Like, as in it can't end. Like, all I can do is create something new. And it's only ever going to be an expression of who I naturally am. To just create something new. And that newness is a new child. But then it's paradoxically a development on who I am as a spirit. So, I mean, I'm timeless. But how old am I? No words for that. No words for how old I am. How young am I? Also no words for that. I feel so young. I feel so young. And so old. <laughs> so old. Oh my gosh. Especially after even just the experiences in this lifetime. And taking my mind from my body and existing in other spaces for times that are way longer than a day here and just the times I've spent here. I feel old, yet at the same time, just know how young I am. And I can never not know I'm young. Right, so this is why when you look up Hermes Trismegistus, you're gonna see me as an old man and a little boy. <laughs> you know, you're gonna see me as the old man riding the emerald tablets and the little boy flying across the sky being very mischievous. It's all an expression of me as a spirit communicating.